All right. So today's section is called colonialism. Go ahead and make a new section title and write down colonialism. And for colonialism, we're talking about the time period in between 1850 to 1940 in Africa. So this is just simply talking about the European expansion into Africa and the taking over territory in the area. Okay, after we have our new section title, Colonialism, and underlined, then we have new bullet, The Age of Imperialism, 1850 to 1914. So Age of Imperialism, 1850 to 1914. So the age of imperialism is between 1850 to 1914, and that's mainly what we're talking about here when we're talking about colonialism. Now, imperialism is simply talking about the taking over a territory and holding on to that territory and not giving that territory back. So you're going in, you're taking territory, and you're not giving that territory back to the people that you took that territory from. Now, you notice over here on the right-hand side, we have a map of Africa. And in our map here of Africa, you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner, we have the entire map and there's flags on various portions of the map. You can probably recognize a few of these country flags, but I'll go through and I'll point you out to them as well. And these country flags are at the territories that they controlled in Africa. So first off, we have our blue, white and red. That's France. So you can see France up here in the kind of mainly in the Sahara Desert area but also on the West Coast area as well. We can see Spain, this flag right here. You can see kind of little territories that Spain has on the side. Italy, you can see the claim of their blue, white, red. So Italy here, here, and down here. So you can see that's where Italy is. Oh, France also has Madagascar as well. Uh, Germany, we can see down here. So you can see Germany here. Portugal is right here, so that's Portugal's flag. Belgium is the black, yellow, red, so that's uh, Belgium right here. And then Britain, you can see the Union Jack, uh, that's what that cross is called, the Union Jack. So you can see Union Jack here, 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 over here, here, and down here. All right? So those are the territories that each one of those nations kind of controls, or it kind of gives you a brief overview of who controlled what territory. Now you also notice there's two places in gray here and over here. Um, these are independent kingdoms. So these are territories or countries that stayed independent from European nations, one being Ethiopia and the other one being Liberia. Liberia was established by freed slaves from the United States. So free slaves from the United States went back to West Africa and they established their own country of Liberia, which is why if you see the country flag of Liberia, it looks very similar to the United States flag. So let me bring up a picture of it. So you can kind of see it right there. Yeah, so very similar to the United States flag and that's the Liberian flag. If I make a one, and write down steam engines and medical advances. So one, steam engines and medical advances. So why were was it that Europeans were able to get into Africa? They didn't get into Africa in the 1600s and 1700s. They were over in the Americas in South and North America. I mean, Africa is definitely closer. And the answer of why they didn't get into Africa in the 1800s is real simple. They simply didn't have the te technology to do so. Once they developed steam engines, they could go up river. Uh, going up a river is quite difficult with a sail. So steam engine, this allowed you to constantly move your boat against the wind because you didn't have to worry about sails anymore. Instead, now you have an engine that is burning through coal, producing heat. That heat is then boi boiling a tank of water producing steam. That steam is then pushing a turbine, which has some wheels uh, connected to the boat that are then moving. So water wheels. 
medical advances, what we're talking about is the cure for malaria. Uh, malaria, if you don't know, is generally spread by mosquitoes. And because of that, medical advances, when they came up with a cure for malaria, allowed them then to solve that entire issue of malaria. Now, let me see if I can find you guys a picture of malaria so you can see kind of what it looks like. So it kind of spread my mosquitoes there. Uh, so it doesn't really show. Yeah, we, we want to know how it affects people. Uh, that really help us out. Well, just kind of know that malaria is spread by mosquitoes. And so that's got kind of the main thing to know. Uh, it kind of affects blood cell blood cells. Um, so you can already kind of see it gives a little bit over here. But malaria, you can see it causes fever, chills, infects blood cells. All right. Number two. Uh, another reason why Europeans started going into Africa was a sense of ethnocentrism. Make it to you and write down ethnocentrism. Now, you'll remember from our previous section about Africa, we talked about the word ethnocentrism, and we talked about how that is the belief that your ethnic group is superior to any other ethnic group. So we just discussed that before. But for two, just write down the word ethnocentrism. We don't need to write down the definition again. We already have. Just kind of know that ethnocentrism is, once again, that you kind of believe by Europeans that they were superior to the Africans, uh, just because they just thought they were. All right. And Europeans, because they believe that they were superior compared to the Africans, this then caused a lot of people in Europe to have the belief that they had the right and responsibility to develop the lands of Africa. Go ahead and make a three and write down rights and responsibility to develop the lands. So the Europeans had a belief that it was their responsibility to develop Africa, and they also had a right to develop it as well because they were just simply superior to the Africans. All right. Uh, this map right here then shows you shows you Africa again, but this time it shows you in color who owns what territory. Not as cool as the other one, but it just kind of gives you a little more overview there. So kind of the gray there was French. Your red right here was the British. Your kind of gray here is the Germans. Your darker gold yellow is Italy. Your light yellow is Spain. Uh, Portugal is kind of this uh, color right here, kind of like a brownish color. All right. So that's kind of just goes through kind of everyone. I think it went forever. Oh, Belgium's right here. Uh, Belgium's kind of like the uh, green. And then independent Liberia, Ethiopia. Okay, uh, this right here, this little picture right here, this is called the Scramble for Africa. So this is a political cartoon. And again, political cartoons to show a what's going on in the world in a cartoon about politics. So political cartoon, cartoon about politics. And we see right here in this picture of what's called the Scramble for Africa. It shows each one of those nations that I just mentioned before and how they're all trying to pull on Africa and take as much as they can for themselves. Uh, so it's kind of like pulling on a wishbone and hoping that you get the most part of the wishbone. So you can see right here, for example, you got Belgium is right there, France right there, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Germany, and down here you have the Dutch and the British. So scramble for Africa is generally what this called is when all the European nations were trying to take over Africa at the same time. Go ahead and make a four. Um, four, we're going to write down imperialists regard their colonies as captive markets. So make a four. Imperialists regard their colonies as captive markets. 
So when the European nations were taking over this territory in Africa, they regarded the territories that they took over as captive markets. Uh, what a captive market is, is a place that can only buy the stuff that you are selling. So a captive market, they aren't allowed to buy anything else but what you're selling. So if in Britain they were making chairs, then the colony in Africa could only buy chairs from Britain. Basically, they could only buy British stuff. So if they wanted to buy anything, they had to buy it from the person that was colonizing them. And that, of course, allowed the nation to then generate more money because you have a captive market in which they can only buy stuff from one place. So that was part of the reason of gaining up the colonies was just to have a captive market. Go ahead and make a new bullet. And we're just going to write down the word here in red, industrialization. And industrialization is talking about how in Europe they went from everything having to be hand-produced and handmade to then starting to get machines and factories going that could start producing stuff through an industry, through like a factory. So instead of me having a, to hand sew something, I said, now I have a sewing machine that I can pump with my foot and I can sew that way. So you had an invention of that. You had an invention of giant looms that you could also use as well. They could do stuff. They could do things very quickly. Uh, you could take cotton and you could put cotton into it and could unravel the cotton for you instead of you having to do it by hand. So a lot of stuff that had to be done by hand before, and now we have machines that we can use that can make those jobs easier. So that's industrialization is a lot about. It's just all the kind of work being done by hand can now be done by machines and can make things easier on people and now allows you to also produce more. So because of industrialization and because we can start producing more and more stuff now, um, you know, you need to be, you have more stuff that you need to be able to sell. So if you got more stuff to sell, then, you know, you got to find people to buy that stuff. And if you're already selling to everybody in your country that you can sell to, then you need other countries you can sell that stuff to. Go ahead and make a one and write down nations competed for new markets. So that then started nations competing for new places, new markets that they could sell their stuff at. So we talk about how the Europeans viewed those areas being captive markets already. Now, not only did you take over a country and then want to sell yourself there, but you also want to pick up cheap resources from that country as well. So you also see these as being places where you can then pick up raw materials, cheap raw materials. Then make it two and write down source of raw materials. So these colonies that the Europeans were picking up, not only were they places they could sell stuff to, but they're also places where they could have the indigenous people who were living there uh, work and extract raw materials for very cheap for the Europeans. And then those raw materials could be then sent back to Europe. Uh, what raw materials am I talking about? Well, let's say for example, uh, you were making rubber shoes in like rubber, you know, rain boots, you know, for example, in Britain. Well, to get rubber, you need a rubber tree. Those don't grow in uh, Europe too cold. But in Africa, rubber tree plants do grow. So you can have the indigenous population grow rubber trees. They can then harvest the rubber sap. You can then take the rubber sap, bam, send it back up to Europe. Make that rubber sap into rubber boots. And then, hey, not only can you sell rubber boots in Britain, but you can also sell those rubber boots also in Africa, where you originally got the rubber sap from. So it allows you to get that rubber material for very cheap, and then allows you then to sell that rubber material back to your captive market. So some of the things that were being kind of exported by European nations in Africa is they were exporting gold. Uh, from Africa. They were also exploring ivory as well from Africa. 
and steam power. See, that's a steamboat. See how it has like water wheel? You can't really see the water wheel, but there's a wheel inside this little uh, dome here. That allowed them to move up and down rivers. Uh, ivory, I'm not too sure what ivory is really used for. I mean, I know it's tusks from like elephants and so forth. But I'm going to be honest, I don't know what you're supposed to really use ivory for besides it kind of looks cool. I guess we should look this up. Uh, what is ivory used for? Well, I know it's from elephants. Yeah, you can carve stuff in it. Let's see, you can carve stuff, uh, jewelry, handles, furniture, inlets, piano keys. Okay, well, I don't know why you need elephant for that part. But in any case, you know, that, that's, ivory was one of the main things that was being used by Europeans and sent kind of around. Okay. We'll stop there because the next story will take me a little while to talk about.